Good morning. How many of you are happy to be in the house of the Lord today? All right. You're kind of here. We are so glad that you have chosen to come and worship with South Cleveland Church of God this morning. Today, as you can see, I am not Josh Lane, but today we have a special time this weekend. If any of you are college students and went to Lee University, you know how important Lee Day weekend is. And so we are so glad and honored that we have some special guests that are here with us this morning, and they are prospective Lee students. And so we want to welcome you to South Cleveland Church of God and say, welcome to your home away from home. These are the most formative years of the life of young adults, and it's during this time that they're making important decisions on what they're going to do with their life, where they're going to go, and some of them are going to come in panicked having no idea. I know that I am a college pastor. I've been pastoring here for three years now, three and a half years, and it is just an interesting phase of life. There are so many highs. There are so many lows, so many wonderful moments. But we want you to know that during this phase of life, you do not have to do it alone. When we say that South Cleveland is a home away from home, we mean it. We believe that here that there is a place for everybody. No matter what your age is this morning, no matter what walk of life you are in, no matter where you are at, South Cleveland has a place for every person to plug in, to get connected and to know you do not have to do your life alone. We don't want you to come in on a Sunday morning and just be part of a crowd. We don't want that. We want you to come in and find a community because you'll easily get lost in a crowd, but when you're part of a community, you will be loved and you will be seen and you will have people that no matter what goes on in your life, they are there for you and there will be moments you will be there for them. So we are so glad that you have chosen to visit with us if you are a prospective Lee student, we do have a free gift for you immediately following service. I will be right out there at our info desk this morning, and we just have a little gift. We want to just get connected. Even if you don't come to Lee, if you don't come to South, we just want to greet you this morning and just to welcome you into a new phase of your life. So this morning, if we can, go ahead and stand up. We're going to get started this morning. How many of you are excited to worship the Lord your God? the creator of your soul, the one that loves your heart far more abundantly than anybody else ever will. So this morning, if we can set our mind on the things above, whatever you came in here with this morning, you don't have to leave here with it. Whatever walked in here this morning, whatever circumstance you are going through, the King of freedom, the Lord that purchased your freedom, that bought the, that paid a price you couldn't. He has come this morning. He is already here. His presence is already working. All we have to do is lift our eyes and say, Lord, no matter what is going on, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help, knowing my help cometh from you, knowing that, Lord, all I have to do is lift my hands and worship, because, Lord, when I know not what to do, when it looks like there is a battle all around me, when it looks like I am surrounded, that we can be like Jehoshaphat and say, Lord, I lift my eyes to you and know you are surrounding me right now. The Lord is already here and he is surrounding this place. So Lord, Father God, today we worship your name. We extol your name. We exalt you. We have come to give you glory and honor and reverence and say, Father God, be the king of this house this morning. Be the king over everything that happens in here. Let your spirit flow, Father God. Have your way today. Lord, let freedom be here. Let hope and love be found. Because, Father God, where your presence is, we can have love, hope, and freedom. And, Father God, you abide here. So, Father God, let your love, hope, and presence abide within us this morning. And, Father God, we hand this day over to you and say, have your way, God. Break our agendas. Exceed our expectations, exceed our minds, because Father God, you exceed everything we can ask, think, or imagine. To your name be the glory today. In your name we pray, in your name we honor, and it's you that we lift up today. Amen. Yes. Psalms 149 and 6 says, Let the high praises of God be in their mouths and a two edged sword in their hands. So let's take the word of God this morning and lift up high praise 
and get your two-edged sword out. And we're going to defeat the enemy this morning in your lives, in my life. Whatever it is that stands before you today, hallelujah, you've got the power of the Word of God, the Spirit of His anointing, hallelujah, that breaks every yoke. The Bible says it destroys the yoke, hallelujah. This, this morning, I want the high praises of the Most High God to be lifted up in this house, to break every yoke.
He's here in this place this morning, isn't he? This is his presence. You are in the right place to experience the glory of the Lord. My goodness, he has set this service up for you. He has so much that he wants to give to you freedom if you just reach out. It's in his presence where there is freedom, where there is liberty. No more shame, no more darkness, no more guilt, no more worries, no more fear, no more anxiety, but freedom. Maybe outside this place there's all those things, but this is the sanctuary of the Most High God. We have come here and we have set up a throne for him to come down and sit upon in this place by our worship. We're going to lift up our hands one more time and we're going to say thank you, God, for being here. Because what I need this morning is freedom. Whatever it is this morning you need is in this place. Reach up. Grab it this morning. One more time, Brother Nate. Oh, Lord, we worship you in this place. Holy Spirit, you are Jesus. thank you that you overwhelm with with your presence God we will not be overwhelmed with all the anxieties and the stress that today Lord maybe we came here in our cars with fighting and chaos and confusion but Lord we say no more because in your presence there is liberty the glory of the Lord resides in this place and I will only be overwhelmed with your presence which brings on freedom in every situation So we say thank you, Lord, and we raise our hands. We say thank you, Lord, already, because you are good and you are a mighty God. And we say you are welcome in this place. And everyone said amen, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank him for being in this place. We welcome you to South Cleveland, just like we've welcomed the Holy Spirit here. We welcome you if you are new to us here. For those that might be visiting this weekend to Lee, we say welcome. We hope you find a place and a family amongst us because that's what we are, a church family. We move beyond the pew and we move into a community. We are not called to live life alone. So maybe you've been here for years and maybe you don't even know the name of the person sitting beside you on the pew. We're going to fix that. God has called us to live life together. We need to know one another because it's a trick of the enemy to live life alone. Find your place. Find a way to connect. On the pew in front of you, there are some connect cards. Maybe you've been here for a very long time and you don't get any communication from us. That's a problem. That means that we don't know your name. And so we want to be able to connect with you. If you will take that card, maybe it's your first time, second time, third time. After that, we just consider you family. But we still need to be able to communicate with you so that you know how you can get connected. We have small groups on Wednesday nights that people can get to know you on a regular basis. We want to be able to plug you into the areas of interest where you can grow and be developed. It's okay to come in on a Sunday morning and sit and soak it all in. But there is times of discipleship so that we grow into the person that God has called us to be. And so if you will fill out that Connect card, we will do our very best to reach out to you. So we say welcome to all of our new guests for all of our regular attenders you could have chosen anywhere else to go but you came here this morning and didn't we have a wonderful service last Easter Sunday Woo! was that not the most amazing Easter service you've ever been in if you weren't here you can go back and watch it on live stream but it was such an amazing day and so we thank you for coming and thank you for bringing your family but there are so many ways that you can connect here at South Cleveland if you don't know this about us we have a heart for children 
We have a heart for those that are in need that don't have a way to give back to us. Royal Family is one of the greatest um, heart pumps and heartbeats of our church here at South Cleveland. And it ministers to those in foster care and to those that are orphans. And last year, we teamed up with an organization called Run for Hope and um, at the Cleveland Half. And Jeff Sawyer, he's going to come in just a moment. Where we're going to show you a video about that. But we want to encourage you to come out, to participate with us. This year, we are challenging you to grow. We're challenging you to increase in every kind of area of your life, be it physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, but even in our bodies. Even if you need to challenge yourself to get out and start walking, we want you to come and participate in something. We're going to give you a goal. And so in just a few moments, we're going to show you this video, and then we're going to have Jeff Salyer and Brother Mark Swank. They're going to come, and they're going to tell you some more de details and information about that. And then the South Cleveland Church Choir are going to come, and they're going to sing down the house. Okay? All right. If you will place those connect cards in the offering when they come by, I would greatly appreciate it. Several years ago, I took my very first mission trip overseas to the Ukraine. It was the first time in my life where I saw children living in real poverty, some fighting for their lives because of preventable diseases. Many of the children I met had been trafficked as slave workers and sometimes worse. But while I was there, I spent time at an orphanage where children were safe, well-fed, loved, and given hope. So now, I'm coming alongside orphanages by participating in the Orphan Run for Hope Project because I know that I can make a significant difference in the life of a child. Every day, orphan children around the world are at risk of survival because of extreme poverty, disease, sex trafficking, and child slave labor. The statistics are staggering. 1.5 million children die every year from hunger. That means a child dies from hunger every 3.6 seconds, and a large percent are orphans. It is estimated that over 400,000 children are sold across international borders each year. Over 8 million children are believed to be trapped in some form of child labor slavery. Orphanages provide the best and last line of defense against these realities in third world countries. But many existing orphanages are financially struggling and more quality orphanages are needed. You can make a difference in the life of an orphan you have the ability with God's help to rescue and provide a safe Christian upbringing for orphan children. Now here's why I'm running, because I believe that this cause is worth the time and energy that I can give. In fact, this is a pure cause that touches the heart of God. So I am running to touch the heart of God so that I can make a difference in the life of an orphan. Your church can join a team of other churches across America to live out the pure religion God desires. Do something. You can make an impact by joining Orphans Run for Hope Project directly to rescuing thousands of children around the world. Dream big, you can do it. If you've been around here at all for any amount of time, you know we have a passion for the least, the last, and the lost. And I can't think of people that are in most need in our world than orphans and those in the foster care system. Our church reaches out to these kids every year through Royal Family Kids Camp and our middle school uh, retreat that they have for foster children. And it's one of the greatest things that we can do is reach out to children. My wife's a teacher at Blythe Bower Elementary School. We're connected with them too. There's nothing better than reaching out to the children of our community. I'm a runner. I think you guys know that. Pastor makes fun of me all the time. He may be faster than me, and it may always be a run to him and not a race, but it's always a race to me. The one thing about running is it takes this thing called endurance. Endurance through uh, 
through the practice and the uh, trials of going through the training program and endurance in the race. I just want to read the definition of endurance to you. The fact or power of an enduring an unpleasant or difficult process or situation without giving way. A couple years ago when Pastor first got here, I ran a race, the Chattanooga Marathon. It was my second marathon and I was struggling. I text April while it was, it was a Sunday morning. I text April and said, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can make it. My legs are hurting. I've already had to walk. I'm at mile 14. I, there's no way. She said, okay, well, I'll pray for you, and then you just, you just keep on going, okay? And I'll come get you if, you if I need to. I get to mile 16, and I'm dying. Like, I literally feel like I'm going to die in Chattanooga by myself on the side of the road. I text her one more time, and she says, oh, I told Pastor, we're going to pray for you, okay? And I was like, cool, okay. Well, I'm going to put on about 1030. I'm going to put on the church service so I can listen to the live stream on my phone. I'm walking anyway, right? My legs are about to fall off. I might as well get some encouragement. And I hear the songs, and we're singing, and it's great. I hear the choir, and then Pastor comes up, and he says, hey, we have a guy running a marathon, and he's struggling, and we need to pray for him. And you prayed for me. And I was like, no. I wanted to quit. <laughs> then you all knew I was running the race, so I couldn't quit. I endured that moment of pain, and it was severe pain. And we put it through, I put it to myself. These children, they're not doing it to themselves. They endure it every day. They endure it. They are the least, the last, and the lost. And now we have an opportunity to help them. And not just them, this church has a heart for missions as well. If you've been here, you know this. Pastors already put a decree out, we're going to give more to missions this year than we ever have. This is another opportunity. This race, the Cleveland Half Marathon that's coming up May 12th, it's also a 5K, is coming up. Mark Swank's going to come and talk to us about how we can partner with Orphan Run for Hope and that we're going to also help Royal Family Kids Camp. We did this last year. It was a great turnout. South Cleveland won a lot of awards. They took on a lot of hardware. I even won an award. So don't let Pastor tell you I'm that slow. Um, but Mark's going to be here to talk to us about it. It's a privilege to be here with you, and I first wanted to start by giving an award to South Cleveland, because last year you were in a top-tier category for fundraising, and this says Orphan Run for Hope, top-tier winner 2017. Jeff, I'd like to give it to you. It is Crystal. And if you notice on the top of the trophy, um, it's a globe. On that day last year, you touched 25 countries for orphan kids in one day. This year, there are orphanages that you'll help in 27 countries, so you'll actually go above and beyond that. And if you look at Royal Family Camp and the ministry you guys have done for years now, and if you look at orphans, they're the same spirit because it's the adoptive heart of God who wants to reach out to make himself known to those without that may never get the chance. So I commend you, and I just want to encourage you. Many of you say, well, I'm not a runner. This is the church of God, folks. We don't run, right? We might roll, but we don't run. <laughs> but you have the opportunity to do a couch to 5K, to build up to run a 5K, to walk a 5K. Also, you can take the 240 challenge, which is basically saying, you know, it costs $20 per child per month to feed a child at an orphanage for a month. So think about that. $20 feeds a child for an entire month. It's mind-boggling, isn't it? But in a third world country, that's what it does. So if you get 12 people to sponsor you and take the 240 challenge without even running, you can feed a child for an entire year. And let me just say this. Feeding a child for an entire year for only $240 should be on your heart because it's attainable. It's very attainable. Um, I want to just share this last thing. Um, recently, I was getting updates from a representative that went to visit one of the orphanages. And this one was in South America. And it was an orphanage where a sibling set of four had just came to the orphanage. And they had to get special permission for the sibling set of four. And it wasn't because it was a sibling set. It's because the oldest was too old for what they would normally take in. But their story is this, 
The mom was in such desperate need, she fell victim to people wanting to buy one of her children. And they wanted her youngest child, her only daughter, to purchase her. The oldest sibling put up such a fight that he convinced them that he was the one who would be sold or bought. And after being in slavery for a few years, he broke free, came home to his family, saw his mom still in disarray. And so he took his two brothers and little sister to the orphanage that you're going to support and said, would you take us? We don't have anywhere else to go. You can make a difference in the life of an orphan child, whether it's running, walking, or taking the 240 challenge. And I know it's in your pastor's heart. I know it's in Jeff's heart. So just join us on that day. We'll do a sign-up immediately after church. We have some neat opportunities for people as well. But we're very thankful uh, just to partner with you guys in that. Thank you. So right after church, we're going to be over here on this side, and you can come and sign up and get more information. You do have to sign up for the race itself, separate from what we're doing as a sign-up, too. So we'll explain all that when we come over here. Thank you for your support. Thank you for helping us last year get this, and uh, we look forward to running with you in a couple of weeks.
I'm happy to be here. Wow. That got loud in a hurry, didn't it? I am so happy to be here. I'm so happy to have this part of the service. Y'all, this is such an important part of the service, and I'm so glad to have the swanks with us today. It's nice to have people that knew me before I was round and balding and wore glasses, and I ran further than to the car in the rain. Uh, Jeff, I had, the same, I had the same thing happen to me in Chattanooga. Uh, I had to call Charlene. I said, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I said, I, you got to pray for me. You have the church pray for me. Of course, the difference was I would parked way out in the parking lot at Hamilton Place, and it was raining. I made it about halfway and crawled under a car and called her. I said, Sister, I can't make it. It's too far. But I would like for you guys to get involved in this. Uh, Judah talked me into, he, he said, hey, Daddy, we're going to run that thing. I said, well, we'll do the little, little part of it. You run, I'll walk. You can run circles around me. But if, if I can do it, any of you can do it. So let's get involved with this. You know, I was, I was thinking about a conversation that, I, that a, a chicken and a cow were having in the, in the farmyard, and they were saying, they were arguing about who gave the most commitment for a breakfast. Chicken said, I give multiple eggs every day, every day. And the cow said, well, yeah, well, I, I give the milk. And they're going back and forth, back and forth. Well, the pig walked up and said, really, guys? Y'all have commitment? Well, I'm not asking you guys to be pigs today. But I, ask, I am asking you to be the cow and the chicken. Give out of your blessings. We, we Things happen here. Ministry happens here. It's real. This is good ground to sow into. And pastors come up here multiple times and said, we're not asking you to go over and above. Don't, don't strain yourself. You can do it. But I will say, if we have been blessed here, and if God has blessed you, give out of that blessings and tithe. That is a part of what we are doing as worship. Does God need your money? No. Do we? Probably. Lights need to stay on. Salaries need to be paid. Ministry needs to happen. But give out of your blessings. God has blessed us, and he will continue to bless us. Amen? All right, you guys be chickens and cows today. And if somebody here wants to be a pig, go for it. Ushers, could you come forward, please? Heavenly Father, we love you today. We thank you so much. We honor you this day. Lord, we honor you with these gifts because this is part of worship. This is part of praise. And Lord, we know that you will, you will take care of us. There is nothing too big for you. There is nothing too hard for you. Lord, we know you are God and you care for us. Bless this offering in your name we pray. Amen.
Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, we have been washed by the blood. I love that old song. I'm so glad to be with you this morning, and Pastor Lipsy sends his greetings from West Virginia. He is the most wonderful man that walks on the face of the, uh, the earth, and he is the greatest pastor, but he is preaching a pastor appreciation for another friend this morning. And so I'm going to be speaking to you this morning on the topic of fearless faith. If you have your word with you, your scripture, your Bible, if you'll turn with me to Romans 10 verse 17. And I want to encourage you after church, we have a lot of things going on. If you'll come and if you'll sign up here and if you're a newcomer for Lee, we'll let you come and we'll sign up there. We have a barbecue fundraiser going on for Kid Fest and then we have a Poza Rica meeting going on. So there is so much life and so much ministry happening here. So stay after church, get connected, find a place for you to belong. But if you'll turn with me to Romans 10 17 and just put your finger there, we're going to get back to that. But today I want to talk to you about fearless faith. Anybody in here runners? I know we already had some, but uh, if you ever go on the greenway and if you're ever walking or running, maybe you're going to start training for our 5K or our half marathon coming up, you'll see that they have banners that are listed out there as you progress through the greenway. And one of them says fearless faith, fearless faith. And one day as I was running, I was reading them, of course, and that one just happened to stand out to me. And as I began to think about it, as I ran past it, I inverted those words and it said, less fear, more faith. What is fearless faith? Can we have a fearless faith in this world today when we see all the chaos and all the confusion and all the things that would want to bring fear into our hearts and our mind? Can we be like David and run at the giants with fearless faith? I want to be like that person But unfortunately, I battle with fear. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the only person in the world. Maybe it's just a random thing. You know, maybe it's nobody else here has ever suffered with anything like that. But I know that it's a weapon. And so as I began to study about that, I I realized that I'm not the only person. Because the very first people that were put on this earth are Adam and Eve. And you know what happened when sin came into the world? The Bible says that shame came. And then they hid because they were afraid. So the very first people were afraid. Next, we had Cain and Abel, and Cain killed his brother Abel. Don't you think Abel was afraid at that very moment? So the second people that were on earth, they were also afraid. Then Cain, who killed Abel, he ran away in fear that somebody else was going to kill him. So the very next people were afraid. So obviously, maybe, just perhaps, I'm not the only person in this world that has ever struggled with a fear. Matter of fact, I know that it's truth because the very first person on earth did. And time and time again, throughout the Bible and throughout Scripture, when you see these mighty men of God and mighty people that are used, you can also trace it back to a fear. So much so that I heard one person say, there are, there are 365 fear knots in the Bible. But I believe that the Bible even speaks even more of that because it says, be courageous, be strong, keep persevering. Most of those scriptures have to do with the attitude and the fear that is inside of us. And today I want to talk to you about fearless faith. And if you'll stand with me for the reading of the word, we're going to read Romans 10, 17. You've probably heard this verse 100,000 times. It's a very simple verse, and it says this. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'm going to say it one more time because it's that simple, that little. So then faith comes by hearing, comes by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. It comes by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. Father, I love you this morning. And Lord, I thank you for this word that you have planted in my heart. And Lord, I ask you to help me to focus and to to deliver exactly what you want me to deliver as part of this message today. God, I know it's not by accident that you have put me behind this pulpit this morning and that you have drawn the people that are here today. God, I will not back up on your word because it is the truth and it is the sure foundation for my life and for all those that are here today. So let us hear, God. Let us hear by faith. And we give you praise for it. In your name I pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Faith. What is faith anyway? Well, I believe that faith is just a confidence in who God is. I believe he is who he says he is and that he can do what he says he can do. And I believe that he is still alive and active today to do exactly what he's always done. 
That's what faith is. My faith is not in myself, but it's in whom who made me. It is for the creator of the universe and for the person and the Godhead who has the authority to watch over his word. This is the God who spoke the word and the world into existence with his very word. His word is so powerful and so creative that when he said, let there be light, boom, it became. When he said, let there be life in the waters, boom, it became. Because it's powerful and it's creative. This is the one in who I put my faith and my trust. That's what faith is. It's just believing God is who he says he is and that he can do what he says he can do. That's what faith is. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. There's a scripture that I love because, you know, I've heard that this particular scripture, I don't know how many times. But the Bible says in Isaiah 55, it says that the word of God is like rain. It says, for as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and they do not return there, but they water the earth and they make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So the rain comes down and it gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. It's the same rain coming down, but it produces certain things. Now listen, this is what God says. He says, so shall my word be, just like that rain, that goes forth from my mouth, and it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, whether it needs to be seed or whether it needs to be bread. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. And listen to the next part. For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. Anybody need a little joy in your life? <laughs> Anybody need a little peace in your heart, in your home, in your mind, over your emotions? Anybody need some of that? Well, do you know faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God? And it is like either it comes down and puts a seed in your heart or it becomes life to you. And this particular verse a few weeks ago became life to me. It has always been a seed planted in my heart because when we speak the word of God and when we hear it, it becomes like a seed planted. But at a certain point in our time, it pops up because we need it to be life to us. A few weeks ago, for those that don't know, I had a little accident on a go-kart. And it was spring break around here, and so we took our boys down to Chattanooga to a little fun uh, putt-putt place and go-kart place. And what was supposed to be a fun day turned out not to be so fun for Miss Lipsy. And so uh, we had already done the go-karts once, and I was kind of getting off and making fun of them because they were so slow. One thing you're going to know about us is that we're very, very competitive. And so we went and played putt-putt, and then later we came back to ride the go-karts again. Well, I noticed that as we went around, that they were getting faster. I was like, all right, now we're talking. Now we're getting into the speed that I like. And Pastor Lipsy and I, we, we uh, were having a little fun, and so we were trying to beat each other out. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to do a fancy little move here, and I'm going to do a little jig and I'm going to press on my brakes and I'm going to make my cart go around him real fast. Well, it didn't quite work out as planned <laughs> because what happened is it turned me right into the wall and into the barrier and I went full force um, without any kind of brakes straight into the barrier. And when that happened, um, I kept thinking, just shake it off. Shake it off. It's funny, right? It's go-karts. It's supposed to be funny. You bump into people, and you bump into things, and it's supposed to be funny. But I kept saying, shake it off. It's funny. But there was something strange that was happening because it was getting darker, and it was getting darker. And I thought, just done. Just push the red button. There was a red button for a reverse on the steering wheel, and I just thought, press the red button. Get back in the race. Go, girl. But something happened, and I couldn't get my hand to move. And then it became darker and darker until the next thing that I knew, Pastor Lipsy was waking me up because I had knocked myself out on that fun little go-kart <laughs> that I was making fun of that had gone so slow prior. And so um, I remember him just snapping his fingers and saying, Dawn, open your eyes, open your eyes. And as much as I tried, I could just barely get them open. I couldn't keep them open. And I'm telling you right now, when you get to a state of helplessness and when you feel weak and when things don't go the way that you planned in life and you are in a place where things are out of your control, I'm going to tell you right now that fear shows up like Johnny on the spot. You think about it in your life. Maybe it's not the same type of scenario, but anytime you are in a weakened state, physically, mentally, fear 
just shows up right away. And you wonder, where did he come from? I don't know. You know, I'm pretty strong. I'm pretty lively. But all of a sudden, fear came in. And when I couldn't keep my eyes open, man, fear shot into my mind, thinking, oh, my goodness, what's happening? Why can't I? And I would strain, and I would strain to keep it open. And as much as I could hear people praying and people crying in the background, I just couldn't do it. And I'm going to tell you, fear set in right away. And listen, this is nothing new under the sun because fear is a weapon. And he will come back and he will come back and he will come back in different types of ways and scenarios all throughout life. So we have to be able to battle against it and to see it and mark it for what it is. But this is just my little scenario. Maybe perhaps you've had something settle into your heart and into your mind. Maybe fear has shown up like Johnny on the spot right out of the blue for you too. But I want to tell you something, what I learned through that, because I had to talk to the Lord, and I said, God, I know that you can make everything good, but I need you to show me how this can be good. That's what I told him the next day. God, I need to see what good can come from this. But the whole time that I couldn't keep my eyes open, and they were just so tired. Maybe you're tired, too. My eyes were so heavy. Maybe things are heavy for you, too. But the scripture came back in my mind because it was a seed planted. Faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. You see, I couldn't see. (laughs) But it doesn't matter because faith comes from what? Hearing and hearing the word of God. In that scripture, it tells me when I can hear something, just like you can hear me today, it infers that somebody is speaking, right? If you hear something, then that means somebody is speaking it. Who are we listening to? What voices are we listening to? Faith comes from hearing. What are you listening to? What are you hearing? This is what the Lord is telling me, so I'm just sharing my journey with you out of the abundance of my heart. And I've got about nine to ten pages of scripture for you today, but we're just going to see what God has just for the people here this morning. But faith comes from hearing, and so that tells me someone has to be speaking it. And it doesn't have to be just anybody, but it's not just regular people words. It says faith comes from hearing and hearing what? The word of God. The word of God. Because this is not fake news. Do you know that that word hearing also could also be translated as reporting? Faith comes from reporting, from someone that is speaking what the word of God says, from reporting what the truth of God's word says. Because it's not just any kind of word. It is the truth of God's word. Because faith is, I believe in who God is and who he says he is, and I find that in the word of God, and that he will watch over his word to perform it. So it is truth. The Bible is always truth and always trumps our facts and our reality. So whatever you're going through right now, you can always take it to the bank. You can look it up in the scripture, and God will prove what he says he will prove over you and over your life. So it is the truth. So when we hear something, man, someone can give you their opinion all they want. And what works for one situation may or may not work for another. You may do it exactly like what they said. But you know what? We have a human element in this world today. So who you're dealing with right now may not respond in the exact same way because we deal with humans. Correct? And so the word of God always works. We don't have to tell our opinions and what we think will work. We always point people to the word of God because it's truth. It's not our fake news that we have in today, but we are reporting what the word of God says, and it is always true, and it is always right. People cannot believe in something that they have never heard of. How do you think people come to know Jesus? They come to know because there was a voice speaking to them. The Bible says, how will they know unless there be a preacher? How will they know unless there be a voice? And it doesn't matter if it's someone standing behind a pulpit or someone standing beside you at your job. As long as they are speaking and being an instrument for God, the word of God never returns void. So no matter who I am, as long as I am speaking the word of God, I come to you in power. And what it does is it builds up faith. How can you even know that there is a restaurant in town to go eat and that it's really good unless someone tells you about it? It's in the most simplistic form. But this is not just anything. We do the same thing with diets. Maybe you've never heard of a diet, but you see somebody. We were just talking about it this morning. What are you doing? What are you doing? And so we begin to tell, and so people want to try that. It's because people open up their mouth, and they begin to speak out things. And the same is true with faith. If you need faith in your life to believe God for who he is and what he can do in your situation, then, man, you need to start hearing it. You need to start hearing it. You need to start getting around some people that can feed that faith, okay? And not only that, but (laughs) when I was in that particular accident, And I couldn't see, and I got in the ambulance, and I still couldn't even hardly open up my eyes. I asked the little EMT guy, I said, are you a Christian? And he said, yes. And I said, great, because I need a scripture right now. I need you to give me a good scripture, because I hold on to the scripture like it's life to me. 
And he was so funny, and I, I laughed over this because he said, well, well, the Bible is just full of them. It's just full of them. <laughs> and I said, you can't give me one scripture, <laughs> one scripture. And so I said, like David, then I guess I'm going to have to encourage myself in the Lord, and I will lift up the cup of my salvation. I began to say and speak every scripture that I could perfectly come up with, and my number one go-to is, God, you will keep me a perfect peace if I keep my mind on you because I trust in you over and over and over and then I began to think of my study that morning and I, I've laughed over this I didn't lose my sense of humor in the midst of it but um, I laughed over this because my scripture that I had learned that morning for Bible study is some trust in chariots and some in horses but we will trust in the name of the Lord our God and so as I began to recite that I thought yeah, I didn't trust so well in the go-kart, did I, Lord? <laughs> I trust in you. And your name says that you are Jehovah Shalom. You are Jehovah my peace. You are my God. You are my strength. You are Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals me. So I will proclaim those things. And you know what? Faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. So even if there's nobody else around you speaking faith into your ear, then you begin to speak it out of your mouth. Because the Bible says, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable, be pleasing to you. Do you know what pl is pleasing? to God, the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please him. So faith is the ultimate God pleaser. So everything that this heart thinks about, everything that this mind thinks on will be full of faith. It will be full of God, of who you are and what you can do over my situation. Doesn't matter what is around me and what I see because I close my eyes off to it because we're going to get there in a minute because everything that I see says fear to me. But in the name of Jesus, I believe you are who you say you are. And so I will take in that faith and I will speak it out. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be full of faith, God. And so when I speak it out, you know what? I hear it. I speak it out and I hear it. It's like baseball, catching and throwing, practicing, catching and throwing. I speak it out and I hear it. And you know what happens? I get stronger and stronger because my faith is growing. I want fearless faith, but it doesn't mean that it's the absence of fear. It is less fear, more faith. Less fear, more faith over your situation. That's what we are asking you, and I am challenging you to do today, because it is not something new under the sun. It began in the Garden of Eden, and it still goes through every person that is here today, whether you want to admit it or not. You can adjust your halo all you want, but the more that we put on these masks, the more you will suffer silently. I said, take off the mask, take off the pretense, be real with God and get your healing in the name of Jesus. But we will have to learn how to fight today because there will be another fear tomorrow. In the name of Jesus, mark it for what it is. It is a, it is a weapon, it buys against faith. Because faith and fear are opposing factors. They are at war against each other. And I want my faith to grow. I want to be counted faithful to God. When I stand before him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I want my faith to be full. I want to walk in the fullness of who he is. Not me, because man, that girl is weak. She can't even keep her eyes open. But in the name of Jesus, I will build up my faith because I will listen to your word because I need the miraculous to happen over my mind and over my body. In the name of Jesus. Point one <laughs> was, if you need to write these things down, and I'll do my best to move fast, but someone needs to hear this today. Faith comes by hearing. Point two, faith does not come by sight. Don't believe me? 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith and not by You know the verse. But here it is being applied together. Faith comes from hearing. So we don't walk by the, the sight, but we're walking by faith. Scripture number two, Hebrews 11, 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things, what? Not seen. So can you see faith? No, it's not seen. That's what we're looking for. Faith is, comes from hearing and not by sight. But I'll tell you what comes by sight. Fear, doubt, and worry. Because when I opened up my eyes, even in the simplistic, silliest little manner on a go-kart, I began to see that there were some people crying, and I could see the fear in their eyes. I could see the EMTs around me. I could see chaos, and even in the simplest of forms, there was fear. And maybe you, when you open up your eyes, you see a reality around you. Do you know what the opposite of faith is? I heard a pastor say this once, and I thought, that's great, because sometimes we think the opposite of faith is fear, uh, the opposite is doubt and unbelief, but really the opposite of faith is certainty. Think about it. The opposite of faith is certainty, because when I opened up my eyes, I could see a certain thing happening, real, 
reality happening all around me. And maybe when you open up your eyes, you see, hey, there's some confusion and chaos in my home. Hey, my kids aren't doing just what I needed to do, and so there's some trouble there. Hey, you know what? At the end of the month, I've got a bill due, and I'm not sure I'm going to have enough money. I've got some problems on my job. This is real. And when we start to look around at these situations, there's a certainty. There's a certain problem, and it's still there. Every time I open my eyes, shut them. Open my eyes and shut them, still there. It's certainly there. And you know what happens? Fear comes in when I start looking around. Again, there's nothing new under the sun. If you look at Peter when he walked on the water, remember what happened? They're in the boat, and a great practically tsunami-type storm came up while the disciples are on the boat, and they were afraid. And Jesus comes walking to them in the midst of the night on the water. And again, they're afraid. (laughs) Something that they see, that they can't understand. Oh, be careful. We're going to get there in a second. And so what does Jesus do? Jesus says, do not be afraid. They're afraid of something that they see. Certainly, there's something coming and walking against them, and they're afraid. But you know what Peter says? He says, Jesus, if it is you, bid me to come out and walk on the water and listen. And the Lord said, come. Someone is speaking faith, and Peter heard it. And faith welled up inside of him that the Bible says that he stepped out of the boat. I would like to think that my faith would be great enough that I would step out into a a tsunami-type storm to walk on the water. But obviously, the voice of God spoke so strongly into him. It's the word of God that speaks faith to our situation, too, that it caused him and compelled him. Faith welled up inside of him when he heard the word of God that he got out of the boat and he walked on the water. We can do the miraculous, and we will see the miraculous when we begin to step out in faith and to believe the voice of God. But what did Peter do? He began to look around, and there was certainly a storm that was going on. And when you see the waves, and when he saw that thunder, and he saw the lightning, he saw all these things that were true, there was a reality that was happening around him, and he began to be afraid. Same thing with us. We look at these situations that we are walking through, And fear sets in, and we do like Peter, and we begin to sink. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because fear, fear settles in, and fear is heavy. Fear is heavy. Faith is lifting. It lifts us up above the waters. And when we just focus on Jesus, we will be able to do the miraculous because he is with us. It's not us alone, but it's his power compelling us. Listen, watch me, focus on me, he says. And Jesus said, oh, you a little faith, why did you doubt? We're talking about fearless faith. But at that moment, there was more fear than there was faith. We want fearless faith. We want to turn the tides. Less fear, more faith. But what happened? He began to look at the real situation around him, the certainty. And faith does not deal with the certainty. It deals with the things that are not seen. So faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. It does not come by sight, but it comes by hearing his word and listening to his voice. But we have a fight. Fearless faith faith takes a fight. It would be great if we never had to go through a problem in life. And I would love that. Wouldn't that be great? Anybody ever had a perfect life? We'll let you preach next Sunday. (laughs) We will. No, nobody. There's nobody throughout the whole entire scripture that had a perfect life except for Jesus. So why do we automatically think that something's wrong with us when we have to? And the Bible says to fight the good fight of faith. It's all about our faith. When I was trying to find scriptures to go with this, I found more and more about fear and about faith. And man, I just had to stop because the Bible is just full of them because it is a huge problem. The war against fear and the war against faith, over our faith. What are some of the things that fight against our faith? Well, what voices are you listening to? If faith comes from our hearing, then we better protect our hearing. Be a discerner of the voices that you are listening to. And I'm going to tell you, fear has a great big voice. It yells very loudly. Any mamas in the room? Anybody ever hear ambulances and automatically you're afraid? Anybody see an accident up above you, in front of you, like, oh, my goodness, that's a white vehicle. My kids drive a white vehicle. I'm just putting it in the most simplistic of forms. (laughs) But if you're a parent, you got a lot of fears. (laughs) But fear is a liar. It's almost when I was trying to recover, I had music playing in the background, and and it was a a fight from my mind. Maybe you've been through something like this, but I'm just going to be very transparent with you. 
when I was sitting there and I was trying to recover, my body was very slow. And I'm a pretty energetic person. I was training for a marathon, and I had a marathon in five days. I had already ran that morning my last run, and here comes fear. Man, you're probably not going to be able to run. You're not going to be able to run this weekend. Your body has to get better by Friday. They said, by Friday, by Friday, you got to get better. you got to get stronger. So they'll say, you can run. And it just started there. You ever seen the little cartoons where they have the little devil that sits on your shoulder like a little pitchfork, and then it has a good little angel? It was like that. Maybe you've been in some conversations in your mind like that, and I, the little devil, he would say, you're not going to be ready. You're, you're, you're going too slow right now. Your body's too sore. And then this would say, I can do all things that Christ who strengthens me. <laughs> and then this one would say, oh, yeah, you could barely get up the steps. It doesn't matter. God's on my side. He's for me. He's not against me. And back and forth and back and forth. But you know what voice I began to listen to more and more because there was something physically happening? The voice of fear began to get stronger and stronger in my mind until it was overwhelming. And I'm going to tell you what the voice of fear said. (laughs) The devil continued on and he continued to say, man, you're not going to be in your right mind again and you need your mind to do your job. Hmm, who's going to take over your job? And then it began to go on, boy, you need your mouth to be able to speak. And in that particular accident, as silly as it was, I bit my tongue so hard that days after my tongue was still hurting. And the devil said, hmm, yeah, you're going to need that tongue to talk. Matter of fact, why don't you just bite your tongue and stop talking? Hmm. And I'm going to tell you at that very moment, something inside of me rose up and I marked what was happening because every physical thing that we walk through in life, big events in our life, there is a spiritual realm that is happening above us. And maybe you don't ever want to say that we are in a spiritual warfare, but let me ask you this. Do you believe that there's a God in heaven? Do you believe that there's a devil that rules this world? Yes. Then you believe in a spirit realm. Okay, we're just taking it back to basics. This is kindergarten right here. Okay, do you believe that God and the devil are against each other? Yes. Okay, and do you believe that Jesus loved you so much that he came to give his life for you? Yes. Yes. And do you believe that you have an enemy for your soul that wants to steal, kill, and to destroy? You. Then you believe that there is a spiritual battle over your mind and over your soul, everything that pertains to you. And I'm not saying that we have to over-spiritualize everything, that if my shoe is untied, something bad's going to happen, the devil's after me. But too many times we under-spiritualize things that happen in our life. And I want to say no more. I want to call it out and say, devil, you're a liar. I see what you're doing. And when he said, why don't you just bite your tongue and stop talking? (laughs) I said, oh, no, devil. You you picked the wrong girl. Because this girl, I just rose up and I said, I will speak to as many people as I can find. I will speak to them on the corners. I will speak to them in Walmart. I will speak to them everywhere I go. And my God, if I have to talk very slowly, let the word of God and the word of hope come out of my heart. And devil, you're going to be sorry that you chose this girl because I'm going to do the exact opposite of what you want because let faith rise up inside of me. And I began to quote every scripture that I could think of. I even told some of the ladies, I probably made up scripture. I don't know because it just became full overflowing out of my heart because there was a war going on in the heavenlies over my mind, over Dawn Lipsy. And perhaps maybe there's a war going in the heavenlies over your mind, over your heart, over your emotions in a certain situation, over a certain person, over a certain area of your life. It's nothing new under the sun, but you have to mark it for what it is. What voice are you listening to? Are you listening to the devil with seeking to the voice of, with the voice of fear? There's a song that says, fear is a liar. Anybody know that song? I love that song. Oh my goodness, it says, sometimes it tells us that you're not strong enough. You're not good enough. You're not right. You're not worthy. You're not lovable. You're not beautiful. You'll always be alone. You've gone too far. That's what fear says. Mm -mm. What voice are you listening to? Is the voice of fear stronger than the voice of faith? And we have a problem because you will have more fear and less faith. And we are trying to have fearless faith. Fearless faith. God did not give us a spirit of fear. He gave us a spirit of power, love, and of a sound, sound mind. God did not give me a spirit of fear. He is a giver of good gifts. So he would not put fear inside my life. But you know what he does? He gives me something to fight against that. He gave me his spirit. When I invited Jesus into my heart, he gave the Holy Spirit inside of me as a deposit guaranteeing his return for me. So when he put his spirit inside of me, he put his gifts inside of me, which is his power. 
Power to fight that fear that comes against us. I can do all things through Christ. Yes, I can. But I will rise up in the power, not of my might, because my faith is not in dawn. My faith is in him. I believe who you say you are, and I believe you can do what you say you can do, and I believe you can do it through me, Jesus. That's what it is, and I will fight those things that come against us. God did not give me a spirit of fear, but of power to fight fear. He gave me a spirit of love for people to share faith with it so that you can hear it today, so that you can take it in, whether it be your seed today, maybe you don't need it today, and that's great, and I pray that for you because I didn't need it at a certain time either. But what I did need the other day, it came back. It came to me bread for the eater. It came to me to be life from my day that day when I needed his strength to say, God, I can't do this alone. Well, good, Dawn. I don't want you to do it alone because it's in me you find your strength. In me you find you, how you move and you find your being. Oh, yes, God. I'm sorry. We have to fight the voice of of fear. Fear versus faith. God did not give us that spirit, so know and mark it. Who gives it to you? There's a fight going on in the heavenlies for you. Not only that, but faith. Faith and worry. Worry is just the beginning, and I'm going to do my very best to move forward. We have these things that are voices in our mind, but I call them the what-if worries. What if this happened? And what if this happened? What if they found someone else to love? And what if they moved on? What if the plant closes down and I lose my job? What if at the end of the month I don't have enough money and they foreclose on my home? What if my children continue to make those kind of decisions and they go away from the Lord? What if, what if, what if? You fill in the blank because we all have them. Maybe our walks are differently, but the questions are the same. And they begin to be a worry, and they stay there. But Jesus said, why are you worrying for tomorrow? Don't worry for tomorrow because today has enough trouble in itself. You are here in the present. God is omnipresent. He's in the past, the present, and in the future. The God who was, who is, and is to come. And so he can take care of tomorrow. That's his job. But when you move past the line of where you're supposed to be and you move into God's territory, there will be some things that happen that should not be there. You are trying to take over God's job. Give back in this moment and have faith for today. God loves you. If he made heaven for us, and if he made a way for us to live eternally with him, don't you think he'll take care of your daily things? He's able. He's able, but yet we have to have plan B, plan C, D. Maybe you've gone all the way through plan Z, and you're worrying about things that might not ever happen. And the Bible says that it steals your rest, and it steals your peace. You're in God's territory when you worry. Faith versus fear, faith versus worry, and faith versus confusion. I love the scripture that says, Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Anybody ever try to figure things out? God, why? But why? I'm doing everything right. But so why is this happening? God, I'm a good person. Why? Why is this happening? And we try and we try and we try to figure it out. We try to trace it back and over and over. God is not the author of confusion, the Bible says, but of peace. He is the author of peace. He writes that on our story. He writes that across our forehead. But when you have confusion right here, you need to be a discerner of your thoughts, the things that are trying to war against the faith. We need fearless faith, more faith, less fear. And so what are those things that vie for the space in our mind? Fear, worry, confusion. If they are there, you need to sift those things out. If we had a cup and if we went to the the lake and if we picked up a cup of water out of that lake, Would you be willing to drink that just freely? No, hopefully not. (laughs) You can, but more than likely you will get sick. Would you rather have the cup out of the lake or a bottle of purified water? Right? We want the clean water. Both water, but what's the difference? One is good for you and one is not. Our thoughts are like that. We have all these thoughts, but some are full of impurities. And you can take them in. That's your choice. But more than likely, there will be some things that happen that should not be there, and you will get sick from the inside out, physically, mentally, whatever it is. But when you begin to take on the impurities of worry, anxiety, confusion, fear, and if you let them stay there, there's going to be some sickness that takes place. We have to begin to filter them out. We line them up with what? The Word of God. Because hearing comes from the Word and the Word of God. Not just any word but the powerful word. And the Bible says that the word of God is like a discerner of the thoughts. Mm -hmm. The word of God is a discerner of the thoughts. And so we line it up. And the Bible says to think on these things, whatsoever things are true. Well, let's see. In the Bible, you know, when when I have a fear that I'm going to be alone, 
Uh uh-uh. No, you are an ever-present help in the time of trouble. You are an ever-faithful friend. Oh, okay, that thought is not true. Out. The Bible calls them vain imaginations that lift themselves up above the word of God and the knowledge of him, of who he is and the right and the truth. When these lies come in, we're supposed to snatch them and take them down into captivity, into obedience to what the word of God says. Are your thoughts true? Line them up. Discern them. Sift them out. Sift out the impurities. Does it line up? Is it true? Is it right? Is it noble? Is it excellent, praiseworthy? Then we're going to think on these things. But if it is not, then out it goes. Because when those things come in and we listen to that voice, it is more fear and less faith. And we're talking about fearless faith. To get through this life and for him to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. To get through this life just not enfeebled and weakened by all these things, and to sit down. Mm -mm. No, we have to take a stand because it's a battle. We war for the peace of our mind. The Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. There's a spiritual battle that's going on above us. But you need to know that we have some weapons. The Bible says take up the shield of faith. Faith. Because there will be some things that get shot against you. Even though you're a Christian, bad things still happen. And what are you going to do? We hold up the shield of faith because, yes, it's coming at me, but I believe, God, you are who you say you are, and you can do what you say you can do, and you will protect me. You are an ever-present help in the time of trouble. So, Father, I lift up my shield of faith. But we know what else it says? Above all, pick up the shield of faith and put on the helmet of salvation. You need to know that when God comes into your heart, there's a whole lot of things that come with it. You need to remember the day that you got saved and what he did in your life. You need to put on that helmet. And I think it's very interesting that the helmet of salvation goes over our mind. Because knowing that he lives here, he resides here in all the power, it puts peace right back here in my mind. Cover up your mind with salvation. And then, if you only have a shield of faith and and things are being shot at you, You can hunker down. But you know what? If you never get up and fight back, that enemy moves in and moves in and moves in until it encircles you. You've got to learn to use like a mighty warrior that shield of faith and raise it up. But at the same time, you've got to pull out the sword of the word. Faith comes from hearing. And hearing the word, you got to speak it out even if it's just for you, just like I had to do and encourage myself in the Lord. you got to speak it out because I had to cover up with, with faith. Yes, God, I believe you are. But then you know what I had to do? Because or else he's going to keep coming, keep coming. I had to speak back and say, no, 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 devil. No, no, no. Because God is on my side. If he's before me, then who can be against me? And I began to speak out every single thing. And so then the devil has to leave. That was Jesus' example when he was in the desert. And the devil, he's just an opportunist. When he sees a foothold, when he sees that you are weak in a certain situation of your life, just know that he shows up like Johnny on the spot. When Jesus was out in the wilderness right before he went to his ministry, after 40 days of fasting, the Bible says that that he was hungry and that he was weakened, and that the devil came in at the most opportune moment to tempt him and to test him. There's nothing new under the sun, Solomon says. So be on guard. Know that it's a fight, but it's a good fight of faith. Choose the right side. Choose the side. Pick a side. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Who will you serve? Choose you this day whom you will serve, the Bible says. Fear or faith? And what I've learned about fear is that fear will bench you every single time. He'll sit you on the bench of life and say, you just sit right there. He'll rob your rest. He'll steal your happiness. And you'll sit right there in isolation. And you won't step out into the big, beautiful world that God has for you. Oh, my goodness. Pick the side of faith. Test him. Try him. Show up. Believe God little by little. God, I believe you are who you say you are and that you're going to touch my body right now. And he shows up. And yes, he does. So then I have greater faith to say, okay, God, I believe you are who you say you are and you can touch my mind and you bring me peace. And then he shows up. And so we believe him for more and we believe him for more. You see this thing of faith. When it says in the Bible that faith is the faith of a mustard seed, that means that it is growing faith. The faith the size of a mustard seed. When you plant it, it grows. Whatever you plant grows. Whether you want to plant fear, it's going to get really big till it overwhelms you. But plant the seed of faith. Faith in exercise is full faith. In James, it talks about how we can have faith, but faith without works is dead. I believe that God heals. Okay, great. You can stay right there on the bench, and you can also believe the voice of fear. But you do nothing about it. So what do we do? We get up, 
and we practice our faith. We get up and we begin to say, because faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. So what I'm going to do to practice that faith is, devil, you want me to keep my mouth shut? Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to stand up and I'm going to speak this word to every single person I come in contact with. With the lady sitting at the beauty salon beside me, yep, I'm going to minister to her. I'm going to pray for her in the midst of 50 people. Lord, I'm going to talk to every person at Walmart in the name of Jesus. I don't care. But I'm going to stand by faith and I'm going to do something about it. And the Bible says that that is complete faith. The Bible says your faith has made you whole, but you got to do something with your belief before it becomes faith to you because you got to work it out. you got to practice it. When you're on a team, you have to practice to be good. Have you ever had one of those people that come around you and they, they act like they know everything, but then you put them in the game and they stink? <laughs> Anybody ever had those people and you're like, whoa, I thought they, they talked a big talk, but they couldn't walk the walk. You they have to get out, and they have to practice. And we have to do the same thing. If you don't practice what you're believing and what you hear, then when it comes time for you to get into the game of life, when you get in the midst of that trouble, you're not going to be any good at it, and they're going to be overwhelmed. It's just like practice. We speak it out, just like throwing a ball. Speak it out, and then we receive it, like catching. Speak it out, catch it. Speak it out, catch it. Speak it out, hear it. Is practicing so when the time comes, we're ready, we're able to play. It's an individual game, though. If I want to do it for you, man, I can cheer you on from the sideline. But the thing of the matter is, you are alone with your own thoughts. You've got to be able to win the war right here with you and Jesus. You can do it. But when you get out on those mats, just like they do on the wrestling tournaments, man, you are ready because you have practiced. You've went to extra practices. You've went to all the different things that you can to be trained so that when the time comes, mm -hmm, you're ready. You're full of faith. What will you plant today? Will you plant faith? What voices will you listen to? Because faith comes from hearing, but you need to be a discerner of your thoughts of what you're letting come right here and what you're hearing. I want you to know one more thing about faith. <laughs> Jesus prays for your faith. I think that's a very interesting thing because we're just humans up and down up and down and I would like to say that my faith is unchanging but that's really not the case we grow from faith to faith faith is like a journey we, we we meet him we accept him into our heart but then we begin to walk it out we begin to walk it out I need to find him here find him here find him there but Jesus he knows that we're just human and it goes up and down so much so that he even told Simon Peter he said Simon Simon Satan has desired to sift you as wheat but I have prayed for you, Jesus, Savior of the world, says, I prayed for you. And what did he pray? He said, I pray that your faith fail not. Wow. And when you have turned back, because you will turn away, you will fall down, Dawn, and each one of you, you will. But when you do turn back, you'll strengthen your brothers. And that's what I'm here to do today, to help strengthen your faith. Because there comes a time where our faith wanes. We grow and, and we go up and we go down. But the thing about faith is we don't put our faith in our own faith. I held strong. I never lost faith. I didn't believe. I believe God was going to come through everything. It doesn't matter if you have faith in yourself because you're going to fail. But our faith is in God, the Almighty. I believe he is who he says he is and he can do what he says he can do. And I leave tomorrow in his hand. That is where my faith is. My faith is not in my ability to be unshaken because I will be shaken. And if I am putting faith in my own faith, the day my world gets rocked, I'm going to feel pretty bad and the devil's going to move in as an opportunist. My faith is in Christ. And however he chooses to move, this is what the Bible says. Our faith is in Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. It began with him when we accepted him into our heart. We progress with him. And then one day, when I make heaven my home, then my faith will end in sight. The real sight, not the things of this world, but when I stand before Jesus. The faith, the things hoped for will end in my sight. That's what I'm living this life about. If you'll stand with me today. Maybe you're... Maybe you've never heard anything like this before. You see, God is an ever-present help in the time of trouble for whatever your trouble may be. And maybe you've never heard that he is a freer, a deliverer. Today is your day in your hearing for you to have the faith to accept him and to believe. And we're going to pray in just a few moments. 
in case you are, are new to us, and maybe you're new and you never heard of Jesus, it's a wonderful journey. We walk with him, and he never leaves us. So we're going to pray for you in a moment. But maybe you're in a season where you need your faith to be strengthened. You want fearless faith, but right now there's a lot more fear. And there's less faith. God, we ask you to come into this place. For whatever overwhelms our heart and our mind right now, that maybe we haven't even spoken to the person beside us. Because we suffer silently and fear has benched us from even our relationships. In the name of Jesus, you are here this morning to free us. I thank you that everything that we've ever needed was provided in the cross. Salvation for those that want to believe this morning. For healing of mind because your body was broken. You heal us all the way. Body, soul, mind, and spirit. Lord, your peace. Lord, our peace was put upon you. You suffered for that. Everything we need is wrapped up in the cross. But Lord, help our faith that fell not. Right now, when things are up and things are down, when we have to just keep on going, God, I thank you that you are here. I'm going to pray for you right where you are this morning. If everyone would just bow their heads. If you are ready to invite the Lord into your heart to begin this journey of faith, if he's coming into your hearing, maybe you've never heard before, but faith has been called out to you today and you're ready to receive it. If you'll just lift up your hand to say, God, I'm ready. God, I'm ready. One, two, three, four. Any more? Any more? Raise your hands up high. Then this service, man, it was for you, but so many more. So we're going to pray this together because we are a family. And we know that it's right and true and it's the good things in life. And we do those things together because we are meant to fellowship together. So let's say this together. Father, we love you. Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I thank you that I have heard it today. And I plant it as a seed in my heart. Come into my heart and change my life forever. I know I need you, Lord. Help me this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Would you just praise the Lord? Four people just gave their hearts to the Lord this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. And it's a beautiful journey. We just start walking it out in faith. We just start walking it out in faith. But I'm going to pray for you before you leave. Because I know that there's a fear in each side of us, in each one of us. Maybe today it's just a seed that you need, but tomorrow the storm comes. In the name of Jesus, I pray that tomorrow it becomes the life that you need. I will pray for you this morning. Lord, we love you. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, that it comes down like rain. And Lord, sometimes it needs to be a seed into our heart. And other days it becomes the life that we need to make it through this moment in time. God, for those that need it, Lord, to be their strength and their nourishment just for today. God, I thank you that you're going to let them meditate on it, Lord. That they're going to shut down the voices of fear. Shut down the voices of worry. Shut down the voices of confusion. Because you did not put them there. But Lord, help us to only listen to the voice of faith. Because our faith comes from hearing your word and you're alone. Because it speaks life and strength. We don't have to do this life alone. You are on our side. You are working behind the scenes. Even when we can't see it, God, you are still working. So, Father, I thank you that you are working right now in each one of our situations. Lord, I thank you that you watch over your word to perform it, and it will never return void. I thank you for your word this morning. God, I give you praise. We thank you for being in this place. In your name I pray, and everyone said... Amen, amen. Thank you so much for coming to South Cleveland this morning. I pray that you are blessed. We pray you have a wonderful, wonderful week. Come back Wednesday night. We have classes for you. Come see us down here. We're going to have the marathon. We have uh, the Glee students. We have the fundraiser going on and the Poza Rica meeting back behind. Go and be blessed this morning in the name of the Lord.